First, we need to introduce the concept of Cartesian products. Let A and B be sets. The Cartesian product of A and B, written as A cross B, is the set of elements of the form A comma B, where A is an element of the set A and B is an element of the set B. Here, A comma B is known as an ordered pair, and it represents the form of a general element of a Cartesian product. Let's look at an example. Suppose A is the set containing one and two. And B is the set containing three, four, and five. We want to find the Cartesian product A cross B and A squared. By definition, A cross B is the set of ordered pairs A and B, where A is an element of the set A and B is an element of the set B. Plugging in the sets A and B, we have that the Cartesian product is the set of ordered pairs A and B, where A is an element of the set one and two. And B is an element of the set three, four, and five. Here we can list the elements one by one by considering all the possible cases. First, we have the possibility that A equals one, and B can be three, four, and five. So we have the ordered pairs one comma three, one comma four, and one comma five. The other possibility of A is two, and again B can be three, four, or five. So we have the ordered pairs two comma three, two comma four. And two comma five. Now let's move on to a squared, which just means the Cartesian product a cross a. By definition, a cross a is the set of ordered pairs a and b, where a and b are elements of the set a. Here, we should be careful not to confuse this with the set of elements a comma a, where a is an element of a. This set enforces that both numbers in the ordered pair are the same. And it is not equal to the Cartesian product in general. Going back, since the set A contains the elements one and two, the ordered pairs are one comma one, one comma two, two comma one, and two comma two. Here we observe that the order of the set A cross B is six. It is equal to two times three, which is the product of the sizes of the sets A and B. Also, the order of a squared is four, which is two squared, which is equal to the square of the order of a. It is not hard to see that these two results hold true in general for finite sets a and b. Now let's define a relation on a set S. A relation on S is a subset R of the Cartesian product S cross S. We say that a is related to b, written as a tilde b. If the ordered pair a comma b is an element of R, let's look at some examples of relations. First, let R be the set of ordered pairs s comma s, where s is an element of the set S. Here, a is related to b if a comma b is in the set R. Which means that a has to equal to b. This r is also called the diagonal. As a second example, let S be the set of real numbers, and we define r to be the set of ordered pairs x comma y in r squared such that x is less than or equal to y, and this is by definition a subset of r squared. Now, since one is less than or equal to two, we know that one comma two. Is an element of R. In other words, one is related to two. On the other hand, four is greater than three, so four comma three is not an element of R. In other words, four is not related to three. Now let S be a set of size n. We want to find the number of relations on S. We call that a relation is a subset of S cross S. So this is equivalent to finding the number of subsets of S cross S. It boils down to finding the number of subsets of a finite set T. Observe that each element of T is either in a particular subset of T or not. So we have two choices for each element. By the multiplication principle, the number of subsets of T equals two times two times two, repeating for size of T number of times. So the number of subsets of T. 
equals two to the power the size of t. Hence, the number of relations on S, which is the number of subsets of S cross S, is two to the power the size of S cross S, which is equal to two to the power n squared. For example, the number of relations on the set one and two equals two to the power two squared, which is equal to two to the four, which is sixteen.